Ladies and gentlemen, with a resounding round of applause, welcome me, Olamiju, to YDC 2018. Good afternoon, everyone. It's been a long day, and I'm sure it's been quite an experience. I thank the organizers, Young Leaves, and I thank Mr. Architect Abraham, a wonderful friend, man of depth and passion. Um, have very limited time to spend. In fact, maybe five minutes. Uh, I want to apologize for two things that um, I won't be able to spend more than five, ten minutes at most, if at all. And then I also want to apologize for not coming with my books. I came from a session, a training session, so by the time I rushed down here, I couldn't get copies. Of the music fire because I promised I was going to so song. Uh, so I'm supposed to talk about making a giant stride spiritually, giant stride in spiritual growth and maturity. But because there is no time, I'm just going to hammer one point. That point leads us to pray, and that will be the end. And the point is this. God took the soil of the ground and laid a statue in the beginning. And the statue was standing. And God looked at it. And I'm sure he consented to the fact that he looks good. The only thing that was not inside the statue is anything living. So we are told that God came close to the statue he had made and he released his breath into that statue. And then that statue became a living soul. My question is, man, as we know him, Adam, that thing that was released into that statue. If I'm to ask you, where was man before he came into that statue? Where was man? Can anyone just help me with this? I'm sure you got my question. There was a statue, and then God released his breath into that statue. And everything about that statue became different. He actually became a man. And then God made him, named him Adam. The question is, where was man before he came inside that statue? Where? God's mind. Thank you. Any other attempt? Sorry? Inside God. Thank you. Meaning, man actually existed inside God. And so he called him out. And said, the only difference now is that instead of staying inside me, you'll be inside this statue. And the Bible says, man became a living soul. So, and that's the point I'm going to hammer. Because I think the only thing I need to help us do is a lot of us have been living in life that is not well arranged, orderly arranged. So we need to learn how to arrange our lives so that we can actually make a giant stride. I would liken that thing or spirit as the case may be that God released into that statue to this seat. And then I would liken that statue, that soil, as the case may be, to this one. And we are told, we understand that man primarily is a spirit. Is it not? The actual man is a what? But God put him inside another package called eh? body. Thank you. Because before man came into that package, this thing was known as maybe some clay, moss, some kind of soil. But the moment that thing came, it became a what? Body. Not like a container. 
And the Bible tells us that man became a living soul. So we can actually say that this is man, he occupies this body, and he has a soul. Now, this is what joins this thing with this one. Somebody gets in me. This thing here combines this with this. And so this is actually man. This is you and I. This one is the operating system. More like Windows 7 or Windows 10. And this guy here is the what? Hardware. Are you getting it? Hardware. But the irony about our lives journey, many occasions, is that, or maybe I should put it to you in the form of a question. On a very normal day, if you are to pay attention to anything out of these three, the greatest attention, which should get your most attention? Out of these three, the body, the soul, or the man? If you are to cater for any more, you know, like if any one of these is meant to take more, most of your attention, what, which one of these should it be? The soul, any other attention? The mind, the mind is a component of the soul. Any other attempt? The body, thank you. Any other attempt? The spirit. The spirit. The spirit. It is the, you can only prosper by the amount of truth you know. And our uh, Papa here, I think I read it somewhere when he said, there is no mountain anywhere. Every man's mountain is his what? Ignorance. My brother, stop making this mistake. Don't walk out of this place making the same mistake again. If anything is meant to take your greatest priority in life, my brother, you should be what? The Spirit. The Bible says, after all these things, 99% of our worries, our shortcomings, our flaws and faults and everything comes from our drive to satisfy the body. Ordinary soil and it's going back where? You want to, how you're going to make sure that your flesh looks good, how you're going to make sure your worries of life, cares of life, and then how you're going to ensure that this is the zone of pleasure. Pleasure, so rare. 99.9%, many a time. 